Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. What we're going to talk about today is I want to thank Grandstream for sending this over. This is the Grandstream GWN7660. This is their entry into the Wi-Fi 6 access point space. You can see it's got a pretty familiar form factor. However, it is much smaller. So, here is our standard go-to, the GWN7630. So you can see this, how big this is. Here's the 7660. So it's it's quite a bit smaller, which means you can't use the same, the same mounting plates and all that. So what do what do you get in the box? Obviously, everybody's moving out of these brown cardboard boxes that just have uh, very little information on them. Uh, let's see. Of course, we always get our QSG with a full copy of the GPL, which is always appreciated. And then, just like all of the um, other Grandstream APs, we get both of our mounting plates. Now, obviously, these mounting plates are smaller. And then we get uh, our bag of, of gear to mount it. So. Uh, I know everybody is super excited about Wi-Fi 6. We're going to go ahead and we're going to plug this in. Real quick before we do that, I will show you once again. Wi-Fi 6 uses the same type of mounting system, but does not use the same, the same bracket. You do have two ports, uh, the net port uh, and then the net PoE port. We've got our factory uh, reset button and then as always the default uh, username or I'm sorry the default password Wi-Fi password and admin password are the same and they are on the uh, the Grandstream FCC sticker so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug this in and get it fired up and we will be right back okay so uh, I've got the uh, access point fired up you can see here now I am gonna have to uh, put in the um, default password, which is on the back. I'm not exactly sure how they uh, generate these, but they, um, they are definitely not just something that I just remember. Okay, so uh, as of the filming of this video, which is October 13th, 2021, um, the latest firmware for the Grandstream access points is 1.0.19.14. And we logged in here and you can see setup wizard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the setup wizard. So we're gonna go next. Now you can see that this is the only AP at the moment um, that, uh, that I've got right now. I'm completely redoing everything with Grandstream. That's another video. So what we're going to do is we are going to change the default SSID and we are going to call this uh, FBI van and I am going to um, change it to uh, the WPA2 password that we normally use and this is already a member device, so we're going to go ahead and hit uh, complete there. And we get all of our services reloading. And okay, so now we are logged in. And let's just take a look at the overface. The, uh, Took, take an overview look at the interface. So this AP can be a controller for 50 different uh, APs, 50 other Grandstream access points. It can be uh, joined to the on-prem controller to gwn.cloud. And you can see right now there are no clients. Um, I do have a Wi-Fi six device. Now the big thing about Wi-Fi six is not necessarily the speed, but it's how efficiently you can handle large amounts of clients and the data transfer for those large amounts of clients. All right, under configuration, we can come in here 
and um, we can add this AP to SSIDs. We can configure this uh, AP. So all the, the um, settings that you are familiar with, with all of the other Grandstream access points. You know, we can do a transfer network group, transfer AP, we can do our discover APs, we can do our failover from, you know, primary uh, leader to secondary leader. We can upgrade or reboot right here. So SSIDs. Now, uh, you can see I created the FBI van. It's a dual band, no, no VLAN, no schedule. No captive portal. So if I edit this, you're going to see uh, 802.11w is disabled. I do not have the captive portal. This is not a guest, um, a guest network. This is going to be my main network. We don't have Mac filtering enabled. We don't have client isolation enabled. We're not going to hide the SSID. I don't believe SSID should be hidden. That's a whole other conversation. Uh, then we've got some other things here, like the, the DTIM period. Unless somebody tells you to mess with that, you should leave some of these settings alone. Wireless client limit, so we can limit how many clients can actually be connected here. We can enable the client bridge support. Um, and what that does is it allows the access point to connect to another access point and then bridge into the wired, you know, bridge a wired network off of the AP. Um, we don't have any client time policies. Multicast broadcast suppression is disabled. Convert IP multicast to unipa unicast is disabled. Like I said, no schedules right now. We do not have enterprise voice and we are not running uh, the ARP proxy. And we only have the one device for now. Now I am going to do another video here shortly of me converting everything here at the house to Grandstream. You got the familiar client screen. Uh, Green. That's that's interesting. So, so since the um, since the <laughs> this is hilarious. This must be one of Wyatt's devices. Is the only thing that I can figure out because now I did use the same SSID and the same. Uh, uh, password that I have because I need everything to just reconnect and you can see things are already connecting uh, to this um, doesn't have a great uh, great signal but it is connected you can see that the link rate is 28 meg and 26 meg that's hilarious I'm gonna have to figure out which device that is I was just saying there's nothing connected to it now and now there is um, I don't know maybe I can connect my um, my phone to it here. Uh, let's see if we can refresh this and get another uh, client connected. Force a disconnect here and a reconnect. Turning my Wi-Fi on and off on my Pixel. Let's see what happens. It says it's connected, but I don't know if it's connected to this AP or not. There's a lot. There's a lot of wireless confusion going on at the moment. That is not my phone. So we'll <laughs> we'll move on. That is hilarious. Um, we don't have any ACLs configured or time policies. These are you can see how fine grain these APs are. The captive portal, um, which is something that I'm actually going to uh, set up on OpenSense, so you're going to see that. And we're going to do some time-based limiting and things like that uh, between OpenSense and Synology. Then, if we could dig down into the radios, now you can see we have band uh, band steering disabled. So band steering is where we try to get clients to connect you know, either to 2.4 to 5, 5 gigahertz. Um, we've got uh, the client steering, airtime fairness right now, all of this is disabled. Over here you can see, yes, just so you know, Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax also works on 2.4 gigahertz, not just 5 gigahertz. So uh, we do not have legacy devices 802.11b, enabled because if you check that box and you get an 802.11b device that would somehow connect, all of your devices slow down. So you got to watch out for that. O overall, I am super, super impressed uh, with the Grandstream APs and we are moving more and more towards them all the time. Now, here's something else that they have added is the uh, Rogue AP detection. And you can detect on the same channel or all channels and then you have countermeasure uh, levels. 
and at a high uh, countermeasure, countermeasure, it's untrusted BSSID, illegal access without authentication, illegal access, spoofing SSID. Um, we're going to disable that for now um, because if I'm reading this correctly, we can actually do a containment mode. If you're uh, familiar with some of the higher end uh, APs where you can actually do a containment mode, basically we're going to send deauth uh, frames over and make sure that nobody can connect um, you know, to, uh, to those kinds of, of uh, SSIDs and things like that. So that's interesting. I've still got to play with that a little bit. A little bit more on this device. Uh, we don't have anything right now set up for the firewall. Everything is any any, and it, the devices do support SNMP version two and three now. You can have a DHCP server, and then under the settings, we have the same thing. We can turn that LED on or off. Legacy TLS compatibility. Um, if your APs are not on a certain version of firmware, you may have to uh, either have that on or off. All of our NTP servers. So if you're familiar with, uh, you know, all of, of the other Grandstream APs, this is going to fall right in line. It's going to fit uh, right in with everything else. We've got our mesh options here. Then you can see your uh, topology. We have no mesh. We may have one of those. Uh, actually, we will. Once we get this uh, network switch, we do have one AP that will be mesh uplinked. Here's where we can create our access schedule under maintenance. Uh, the first thing that I always do is I come in and I change the firmware server to firmware.grandstream.com. I up, upgrade, and then we can have alerting over here. So uh, really the thing is that uh, I think that, that people want to see is like what kind of speeds do you get out of this. So you can see that I am, I am uh, really too close to this AP. I'm about two feet from it. My phone is, and you can see that... Uh, my phone is connected at 866 megabits for the transmit and 6 megabits for the uh, receive. I can fire up the speed test here. Now I do have gigabit uh, internet and everything is uh, wired uh, up, up to this AP. So I'm just going to click go here real quick on the, uh, the speed test. And so this is sitting about... Uh, uh, two feet, three feet away, and you can see I'm getting 450 to 500 uh, megabits on the download. So it ended up with 467, and now my upload is 48.8. Uh, so not too bad of speeds. Uh, you know, we'll have to really put a, the, the test to this thing, right? Put a lot of clients on it, put some actual Wi-Fi 6 clients on it. That's the thing, right? Like just having these is great, but it, does your infrastructure work, uh, you know, for these kinds of speeds? And a lot of these APs are just coming with a one gigabit port. Now this does have two, so I'm hoping that here soon they're going to give us uh, the option to create a lag out of those. But I don't know if that's going to happen uh, yet or not. So uh, I'm going to get everything switched out um, here over the next few days, probably take a week, and then we're going to come back, we're going to do a video, we'll do speed tests all over the place with all the different Grandstream APs, so come check that out, and if you're getting into Wi-Fi 6, I recommend uh, definitely the Grandstream Wi-Fi 6 APs, it's, it's going to be just as solid as the rest of the APs, so, um, and the, the MSRP is, um, let me look real quick. MSRP on that is going to be 129 USD. So it is, it's not that expensive. And I have a Wi Fi torture box that you're going to get to see. And this thing is going to fit in the Wi Fi torture box perfectly. So, all right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Those links are all down below. If you'd like to support the channel by uh, becoming a uh, patron on Patreon, that link is down below. There are Amazon affiliate links that are clearly marked Amazon affiliate links. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks to the channel. Uh, those links are down below. Don't feel obliged to use those, but it is appreciated when you use them. And, um, 
If you need that IT consulting, willyhow.com. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.